friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Liza Compass and if you're new here, I love creating videos about making visual art, music, performance art, and all of those things. I also like talking about my creative process a lot and today's video is going to be every little bit about that. Now in my last video, I talked about the fact that I am a synesthete and I happen to realize that many of you may not even know what that is, so we're gonna talk about it today. We are a new and growing channel around here, so if you're intrigued at all by me, my art, or the things that I talk about, don't forget to hit subscribe down below and join this amazing and growing family. Synesthesia is a neurological condition that causes two otherwise unrelated senses to become cross-wired inside the brain, meaning that they influence each other in involuntary ways. Now that sounds scary when I first talk about it, but it's actually pretty cool. It means that you end up getting people that can hear color or taste sound. For some synesthetes, every number and letter of the alphabet have a specific color, shape, and even personality associated with them. While other synesthetes will hear the word Monday and immediately taste lukewarm ginger ale. Scientists studying synesthesia today believe there could be as many as 80 subtypes of synesthesia involving a wide variety of different ways that the senses could potentially become crosswired. That's crazy. Everyone's experience with synesthesia is completely different from the next person who has it and I actually happen to have two subtypes of synesthesia. I know that sounds completely crazy, but bear with me, I'll try to explain them. The first one is actually pretty easy to explain, and it's also the most common type of synesthesia out there, meaning most people that have synesthesia will probably experience this, and this is called grapheme synesthesia. Basically, numbers and letters all have their own colors assigned to them inside my brain. It's like I color-coded them from the time I was a toddler, I don't know. I honestly can never remember a time not experiencing grapheme synesthesia now that I realize what it is, but when I read, I do experience color coming from the letters or the numbers that are on the page. Um, but not in the way that most people would think of. If you're looking at the bottom of the screen here where it says grapheme synesthesia, these are actually my color codes. It's not that the letter actually turns into the color, like G isn't going to actually turn green, for example, but it will have this like glow around it, I guess you can say, um, and it becomes very bright. Like It's like they're sitting off of the page and they're sitting in a pool of the color associated with them, and it's trippy and weird, and I they don't even make sense to me. Like Some of my favorite letters have like colors that I'm like, really? I don't like that color, but they've always been there and they've absolutely never changed. It's really interesting to get in a conversation with someone else who experiences grapheme synesthesia if you ever start talking about your perceptions of like the number three, for example, um, the number three for me happens to be yellow. But if I'm talking to another synesthete and they strongly disagree with me because they're telling me that no, threes are blue, they're always blue. Well, guess what? Neither of us are going to be wrong because our experiences are completely different. We have the same exact condition, but our brains have assigned different colors to the same exact character characters that we're looking at on the page. So really, it is a completely individual experience for everybody. I can totally understand if you don't have synesthesia that this sounds completely bizarre, um, but the really funny thing is, is it feels completely normal to at least me and from my understanding other people that have synesthesia and other types of synesthesia, it feels completely normal to them too. Um, I actually never realized that there was anything different about my perceptions of the world until I was about, I think 16 or 17, driving somewhere with my mom, just going down the road, having a random conversation. And she started talking about this article that she had read about a girl who was able to see colors when she read letters, read numbers, when she was reading, it was like a rainbow on the page. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's so weird. I can't believe that people are made that way, just out of amazement. And I'm just sitting there like, you don't experience that and just dead silence and that's when we realized oh my gosh 
I must have synesthesia. <laughs> in fact, it's pretty funny. When I was in elementary school, we had this giant mural painted in our cafeteria of the alphabet, like A, B, C, D, but all the letters were painted a solid color. And I always thought it was so weird that they painted most of the letters the wrong color. There were only a couple of them that actually matched up with my perceptions. And I used to tell my friends, I'm like, the letters are painted wrong. And people are like, Pfft. I was the weird artist kid. I've always been that way. Um, but now that I look back on it, that is, it's amazing I didn't figure it out then. The second type of synesthesia I have is called chromesthesia or otherwise known as sound to color synesthesia. Now this one is a little bit more difficult and abstract to explain. So just stick in there. I'm going to try. Unlike grapheme synesthesia, where a specific letter is associated with a specific color. It's not that a particular note or a particular tone in music is associated with a particular color. It's more fluid and abstract and flowing than that for me. Now, from what I understand, some synesthetes do experience music that way, but that's not my experience. It's not even specific types of music either, or even specific instruments, which again, some synesthetes do experience music that way. My chromesthesia is definitely heavily associated with things that are clearly melodic. So music would be the best way to describe that. For me, it's almost like hazes of color will appear with different kinds of music. And sometimes even like sparks of things will appear in different areas, like phys physically inside my vision. Sometimes it's more implied, like it's very subtle and like I, I get the feeling of a color, but other times it is very much predominant in my face and very, I'll, I'll like see it in my peripheral vision. And sometimes I'll even have different like colors, like speckle in and pop based on what's going on and what I'm listening to. And I also have this very interesting interaction with the lyrics in the music where they, they flow together and they have direction and space in time. I know that there is a kind of synesthesia that that occurs in, and I can't say for a fact that I have that, but there's definitely a very specific emotional movement and element to the way I hear music. And in very emotionally charged pieces of music, they don't just have color, they also have movement characteristics and direction and pattern and pulsation. And all of these things combine together in not just the way I experience music, but the way I literally see it and heavily impacts the way I write music as well. So why do I want to talk about this today? Well, I feel that in order for you to understand me as a creative and as an artist on any level, I want you to kind of be able to understand a little bit of where I'm coming from. You see, for me, I love creating visual art. I've always loved making art and just letting the art speak for itself. I've also always loved singing and writing music and performing for people. But really the two have existed in their own worlds for such a long time throughout my life. I felt like I had to do it that way. I thought that I wasn't able to put them together and let people experience my art forms together as a whole. And I realized that that's ultimately just doing me an injustice because that's exactly what they are to me. Every piece of music I write is so visually different from the one before it and the one after it and every other piece that I'm ever going to write. It's very much an encapsulated piece of artwork in that of itself. And they all tell a very intimate story of the things going on inside my brain. I just really wanted to find a way to share my music in a way that could be appreciated visually. And that's why I made this channel. I don't just listen to music, I experience it on a deep emotional level. And for me, Emotionally charged pieces of music not only have color, but they have movement and they have spatial direction as well. 
Because all of the art forms I love, like painting and music, performing and creating in general, are all charged with emotion, it's no wonder that I come up with my best melodies while I'm letting my brush just wander across a canvas. Or that I dream up lyrics and colorful moving rhythms, rotating, pulsing, or even running across the back of my mind when I'm reminded of intense emotional events in my life. The impact of color has always been a huge part of my life. It's been everything. Every major event in my life, every milestone, every failure, every major realization in my life has a very specific palette. And this palette is filled with colors and sounds and rhythms and texture. It's filled with angles and, and, and lines and movement, direction, and temperature. All of these things make up how I see the world and how I remember my past. And it also heavily impacts the way I create music because just like everything in my life has its own palette, every song I write has its own palette, I guess, if that makes sense. It can be tricky and difficult to try to explain the pulsing colors inside my brain as I listen to a song on the radio, or how the texture of your words on my skin will manipulate and morph into new sensations as our conversation moves from happy to irritated or from anger to despair. It might sound a bit loony or disabling to someone living without synesthesia, but for those of us that do experience sensations like this, we don't have any other perception to compare it to. This is just normal. It's us, and it's normal. I honestly don't feel that having synesthesia hinders my life in any way. In fact, I can't imagine my life without synesthesia. But I also can't say that my life would be any easier without synesthesia just because I don't have a point of reference. I can't compare that. Just like if you're watching this and don't have synesthesia, you wouldn't be able to tell if my life is easier than yours because you've never experienced what I'm experiencing. So I guess we just have to all live in ignorance with that and just be like, hey, we are who we are, right? That's actually a very good message to take from all of this. We are who we are. We can't change it. We're born the way we are for a reason. And that's perfect. That's perfect for the person you are. It's perfect for the person I am. Aw, that's a really good message. <laughs> As studies into synesthesia continue, researchers have found it very difficult to determine how common synesthesia actually is. To put this in perspective, just a few years ago, scientists determined that synesthesia was only a part of people in 2-4% to of our population. But today, researchers think it might actually be present in as many as between 1% and 25% of our population. That is a ridiculous range, which honestly implies that really people have, have no idea. The main reason probably being that many of us that have synesthesia don't even realize that we have it. And that also implies that synesthesia is way more common than we ever thought could have been possible. And that really just tells me that most of us that have it have no idea that anything is different, have no idea that, you know, people are seeing things differently or hearing things differently, just experiencing the world in general way differently than we are. And it also raises the question that how do we know that anybody experiences the world in the same way? I mean, personally, I've debated, like, I know what the color blue is. My hair is blue right now. But what if my blue is visually a different blue than what you're seeing? Maybe you look at me and you see my color as being orange or something, even though we both know what orange is. What is perception? What is color? What is reality? Are we in the matrix? Anyway guys, that's about it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed learning all about synesthesia and me rambling on about the weird things that go on inside my brain. In my next video, I'm going to be taking you guys on a visual and auditory journey through the perceptions of my mind. It's probably going to be really trippy. 
So if you liked this video and want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit subscribe down below, ring that notification bell so that it's wiggling and you'll get notified every single time I post a new video. I post videos at least once a week on Sundays and we have a lot more awesome content coming for you guys. Also, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit like down below and leave me a comment telling me what you thought of everything. And I really appreciate you guys stopping by. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.